In section 9.1, we will begin to talk about systems of equations. We will first just talk about solving the equations themselves before we move on to applications. In the first lesson, we just talk about the equations themselves. There are three ways to solve systems. One would be by graphing, either by hand or on your calculator if it's possible to graph both equations on the calculator, by substitution and by elimination. We'll look at an example of all three, but keep in mind that all, not all graphs are the same. For instance, you cannot graph vertical lines on your calculator, so you need to make sure that you do have a semi-grasp of graphing by hand. Don't just rely on your calculator. We will take a look at this problem first, and we'll do it all three ways. Now, the first way that we would want to look at would be to graph both equations and we want to see where they cross. Now keep in mind that if you're graphing two lines, one of three things will happen. Either the lines will cross, the lines will be parallel, or they will end up being the same line. Now think about that for just a minute. I've sketched over to the side those three possibilities. So if the two lines cross, there is actually an answer, and the answer is the ordered pair where the two lines cross. If the lines do not cross, if they're parallel, there's no answer because they never cross each other. So we would say that there's no solution to this set of equations. If the lines end up being graphed on the same line, it means they cross everywhere because there are still two lines there. So this one would be, we would call this infinitely many solutions because there are so many answers to this problem. So when you graph the two lines, look for one of these things to happen before you start, you know, before you write your answer down, look at the lines in general. Taking a look at our example, if we have decided that we would like to do this one using the calculator, then we need to make sure that we get y by itself in both equations. So that's the first thing that I would do, and I would hope that you're pretty proficient in that. So we'll take each equation and get y by itself. This is the first equation. I've just moved the negative y to the left to the right hand side, made it a positive, and moved the one to the left hand side. So that's our first equation. And here's our second equation. So we have two equations, and all we want to do is put those two equations in our calculator. As you can see, I've just typed both equations into the calculator. I'm going to graph them in the standard window. Remember that if you want to change your window, hit Zoom Standard, which is number six, and that will put this in the standard window. And notice I've graphed both of them now. Both equations are there. All I want to do now is find out where they cross each other. So I'll hit Second, Trace, Intersect, it says first curve, I hit enter. It says second curve, I hit enter. It says guess, so I take my cursor and I put it where it looks like the two lines cross and I hit enter. And it tells me at the bottom of the screen that x is negative one and y is negative three. So that's my answer and if I really wanna get correct with it, I would write it as an ordered pair, parentheses, negative one, comma, negative three, close the parentheses. I also might want to check it, so I might want to go up to my original equation, put both answers into my original equations, both equations, so I would say 2 times negative 1 minus a minus 3, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, that would be plus 3, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. I would also put both numbers in this one, negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. You need to make sure they work for both of them. If they don't work for both of them, then you've probably done something wrong. That's a good way to check it out and make sure it's correct. Now we'll take a look at solving this one using substitution. The exact same problem, we'll just use substitution. In substitution, what we want to do is get one of the variables in one of the equations by themselves. I'm going to start with the first equation because the y variable has a coefficient of one on it. I could start with the second equation and get the x by itself, 
I just want to try to find the one that looks like it would be easiest. So I'm going to get the y by itself in the top equation. Once I get one of the variables by itself in one of the equations, I will take that same equation and plug it into the other equation. Never plug the equation that you got into the one that it came from. That's a gigantic no. We don't want to do that. That will never give us the correct answer. So what we want to do is plug this one into the other equation. Now all I've done is put 2x minus y in the other, 2x minus 1, I'm sorry, in the other equation where the y variable was located. You can see I've put that in blue so you can see it. Now you just solve your equation for the remaining variable. My equation has x's in it, so I'm going to try to get x by itself. As you can see, once I've done all the work, I end up with x equals minus 1, which is what I got when I did this on the calculator. Now, I want to try to find the other answer. So I'm going to take my x equals minus 1 and actually plug it in to this equation. I could also plug it in to this equation or this equation. But I'm going to put it in the blue one because I've already gotten my y by itself. So I know that whatever I get will give me my y value and that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to put 2 times minus 1 because x is minus 1. Subtract 1. See that's what we see right here. Equals y. And when I do the math, 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 1 is minus 3. That's what I got when I started the whole process on the calculator. I got negative 1 and negative 3. And that's what we have now. So I know that's right because I've checked it in the previous problem. Now, there are a couple things that could, that could happen that might surprise you. Let's say um, you're working your equations and you end up down here. Instead of getting an answer for x, you get something like 5 equals 5. Well, if you get something so that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side and you run out of variables, that is the same as if you had the many solutions problem when you graphed it. So if you get something like that and you're working it by hand, you would stop and you would say infinitely many solutions. And it would be something, let me just go over to the side, that might look like that so that the left hand and the right hand side match each other. They would look the same. If you get it down to where your variables disappear and the right hand and the left hand side do not match each other, you would say no solution. That's the same as if you had two lines and they didn't cross each other at all. This one's the same as if you had two lines that were graphed on top of each other. So that can happen when you're doing your algebra and that's how you know that there's no solution or many solutions. Next we'll take a look at this exact same problem and we will do this problem by using elimination. Now the whole purpose of elimination is to eliminate one of the variables. So you want to analyze your problem and you want to see if you can find in one problem a negative and in one problem a positive so that they would eliminate easily. If you do not find that, then you need to multiply one whole equation by a negative 1 so the signs will change. So in this problem, I actually see that I have a subtraction sign here and a plus sign here, which means that if these two were the same number, they would eliminate. If this had been a plus and that one had been a plus, I would want to multiply maybe this whole equation by a negative so it would change all the signs. What I now need to work on is making the two numbers the same. This is a 1, this is a 2. If this were multiplied by 2, it would also be a 2. But I can't just multiply that one by a 2 just because I want to. I have to multiply the whole row by 2 if I do that, which will change this equation. It will now be 4x minus 2y equals 2. I've just multiplied 2 by the whole equation. The other equation did not change. 
Now notice what's happened. I now have a negative 2 and a positive 2. In elimination, you want them to be in a certain order. You want there to be um, x, y, and number. x, y, and number. So if your equations aren't set up that way, you want to make sure they are. And you want to stack them on top of each other because you're going to add now. You're going to add everything you have. 4x plus 1x is 5x. A negative 2 plus 2 is a 0. It has eliminated, and that's what we wanted. 2 minus 7 is minus 5. And x now equals negative 1, which is what we keep getting, isn't it? That's our answer. To get the other one, take this answer and plug it back up into one of the original problems, the original equations, and that will give you your other answer. So if I plug this into 2x minus y equals 1, x is negative 1, so 2 times negative 1 minus y equals 1. Negative 2 right here. If I bring the negative 2 across, I get negative y equals 3. And if I change the signs, I get y equals negative 3. And now I've still gotten, this is the third time that I have gotten that answer. So I know I must be right because I got it by graphing, I got it by substitution, and I got it by elimination. And those are the three ways that we would solve systems of equations with two variables and two equations.